Hey strangers, it's Bitsy Tandem back with something new today. So today I wanted to show you guys how I do my shading. Now when I first started digital creation and uh, illustration, I had a really hard time finding my own way of shading. And if you look through my chapters of my webcomic or my published comic book, you can tell that my shading changes about three to four times throughout the course of five or six chapters. Um, and it was around chapter six or seven that I finally found the perfect way for me. And I can make some of these flat colors turn into beautiful, wonderful things that is my personal favorite way that I have found to, to bring out my characters and bring out my story. Now I am using Clip Studio Paint EX if you're going to get this, uh, this program, which I recommend you do. It's a great program. I absolutely love it. It's I, I would go as far as to say is it's more powerful than Photoshop just because it can do a lot of 3D work right in the program um, as well as animation. I I love it. It's a one-time buy. You know they they have tons of great sales. Make sure you get the EX Clip Studio Paint EX. Um, don't get the Pro because it doesn't come with all the bells and whistles. If you want those bells and whistles? They are great. Um, EX also comes with this really cool thing called Clip Studio Assets, which is where you can access free range, like free to use items, brushes, things that other creators who use this program have made and uploaded to share freely with everybody. It's a great community. I've uploaded some stuff and I, of course I use a bunch of it. Um, and I'll go over some of the, some of my favorites here. And uh, as for um, what I use to draw, I use a Wacom 13 HD um, Cintiq. The Cintiq is a great option for those of us who have a past of traditional drawing or just have bad uh, hand-eye coordination and need that extra, you know, right in front of my faceness, um, <laughs> which I definitely do. But I've been using this thing since 2014 and it is still running strong like I bought it yesterday. It is 100% worth the money. Um, now of course everybody has their own preferences and stuff, but I, I personally love it. Um, and this is my personal way of shading. So I hope this helps you because I had a hard time figuring out how to shade in the beginning. There's shell, uh, uh, I can't speak guys. There is cell shading, there's painting, painters, the painter way of shading, which is like all colors and beautiful and awesome and I suck at it. And there is two-tone shading, there, and there's grayscale shading. And there's probably more, but I do a variant of grayscale as I mentioned earlier, and this is how I do it. So I come over here, I've got my ink layer, my color layer, and my fun background. Um, and I make a new layer, and then I like to name it something, and I, I have my own shorthand, so I just put SHD for shade. Boop. So you hit the blending mode, and you go to multiply. That is pretty much how you get everything pretty. And then you hit gray tones, and I like to go like a four to five medium gray tone. Uh, this is a very light panel, so I don't want my grays to be very dark. Um, and sometimes if I need an extra dark in specific areas, I'll go back through with a darker gray. But for the most part, I stick with the one, and I go and I follow all of the major lines. So I come up to the hair, and I just... I make sure that all of the places where there needs to be depth gets depth. And of course, you want to keep your light source in mind. So if we go back to the panel right before this, we've got a moon as the light source. And you can see the light is being cast right here, and most of the shadows are back here. Pretty standard stuff. Um, so I want to make sure I remember down here where my moon is, my light source. So it's kind of right in front of her right now. So the light is going to be hitting right there. Um, so this part's going to be a heck of a lot darker. Um, so this character right here, her name is Miki, 
and if you guys have seen One Piece, she is doing a Nami signature happiness punch to get the boys' attention and make them shut the heck up, which is just, I don't know, this is, this is my hot spring episode. I'm allowed to do things that I feel like doing because this is my story. Um, this is my side story. So I, I have even less shame. <laughs> but she was actually created off of a really cool high fantasy dream that I had. I have wicked weird dreams. They're amazing, usually, most of the time. And uh, I, there was this one where like magic was fading from the world and she had like the last bit of magic left and it was super cool and there was like Fire Emblem-esque turn-based fighting and it was really neat. It was very, very... Um, it's a, what's the word? Oh, what is that word? Not realistic, but like in depth, kind of, it's not the right word I'm looking for, but me and words have never really gotten along. That's why I draw. I've always had stories to tell, but words have kept me from telling them. So I'm like, screw you words. I'll learn how to draw. And six years later, here I am. Seriously, guys, it only took six years. Isn't that great? Anybody can learn to draw in six years. You just have to practice every single day for six years. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. Believe me, I have solid proof that I genuinely sucked at drawing. I was not born a drawer. This is not my natural talent. Some people have it. I've got natural talent in other things. Everybody's got their own talents that they are just good at because that's just who they are. Um, but drawing is not one of them for me. This is a skill that I have developed over years and years of practice, which is why I don't do commissions, because I hate drawing other people's stuff. I learned to draw to do my things, and when I draw other people's things, it just makes me angry. Um, so it's just better for everybody if I just stick to what I'm doing. <laughs> what was I talking about? I was telling you about the character, wasn't I? Did I finish? Something about my dreams and my imagination and how I just really wanted to get her into a story because she was just such a cute, awesome character. So I'm like, screw it. I'm, I'm gonna put her in my side story because I need people for my side story. And better to have someone from a dream than just a crap character that I pull out of my butt. Which I am not proud of, but I have a few of those in Maiden in Disguise. Trash characters, as I call them. I am a world builder and a character designer, and I typically put great time and effort into my character creation process. But once in a while, I just don't have time for that. So, trash characters. Uh, Billiam, with the big glasses, the senior and leader of the uh, um, AV club in Maiden in Disguise, he is in fact a trash character. Um, though I have decided that I actually want his character to develop a little bit, so he has become less trashy, or will become less trashy. He hasn't yet. He still has to develop, but uh, <laughs> his character will become less trashy. The blonde fake gamer chick in the club is a 100% trash character though. There will be no there will be no untrashing for her. I just felt like making a fake gamer girl. I don't know why. Maybe because Ellie's going to kick her butt probably very soon in the near future all the time. Um and it's awesome because Ellie's a real gamer girl. For those of you who went to high school around the same time I did, there was, there was a, I mean, gamers weren't cool back then. Uh, nerds, geeks, we, we weren't cool when I was in high school. Uh, and I, I just stood in the corner because I was, I was the weird girl uh, with crazy pom-pom hair. And nobody wanted to talk to me. And then all of a sudden, fake gamer chicks came along and got all this attention and stuff, and it just, I guess, made me upsetty with my spaghetti. 
So I'm I'm showing this fake gamer chick up with Ellie in my story because that's probably the psychological reason. I don't know why I'm analyzing myself like this. This is weird. I'm supposed to teach you guys how to shade. Look, I'm following lines. Woohoo! It's really not that hard. I think a monkey could probably do this. They they can pick things up and scribble and follow follow along, right? Right. Um I want some darker stuff right here. Do, 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 do. There. Um, so average Geoterran male, uh, officially named Martin, life of an average Geoterran male, but I call it AMA, oh dear, these acronyms, AEM for short. Um, that is what this side story is. And... It is my designated hot spring episode, I think I said that already, but what I didn't tell you is why I'm making a side story. So the reason behind it is because I wanted to share more of my world. I created the world of Eoterra, and it is um, located in a different realm of reality than Earth is. So it's not even pretending to be Earth, except it kind of is pretending to be Earth because everybody seems to think it's Earth, but um, it's really not supposed to be Earth at all, guys. Eoterra has its own history, its own, um, what are the words, what are the words? See, these words, these words again. Um, Eoterra has its own history and its own rules and its own people and its own races, and everything, and its own universe. So I made the side story to, te to tell, and to teach, and to show, I guess, you guys more of Eoterra. I wanted to explain a little bit of how things work in Eoterra, and how just how different it is. I mean, on the outside, from you know, the first time you look at it, it looks very Earth-like, but it's a much younger planet. It's a much more peaceful planet. Much, the um, the the race of human humans, Eoterans. They're not humans. The race of Eoterans is much um, more peaceful than humans. It's pretty much like my ideal world. I would hope. Pretty much. Yeah. So anyway, I created these robots to explain my reasoning and my creations because I keep confusing people apparently and nobody seems to realize that Eoterra is not Earth and then they freak out every time they're like, why is it 1813? And I'm like, well, it's a younger planet. It makes sense to me. So, so I made these robots to explain it, because it was really confusing people, and guess what? I confused them even more with the robots, which is to be expected, because I don't know how to use words well, but the, uh, these AI that were created by, um, these realms of reality that are aware of the other ones, I call them the aware realms, do do do, super, um, great name there, nice and basic, um, the, uh, so the AI talk to each other across the realms of reality. We've got one with a voice modulizer, who's the second one to be made ever, and we've got one without a voice modulizer, which was the first one to be made ever, and they talk a lot, and one with the voice modulizer, I like to think sounds kind of like a stuffy British guy, just because I was listening to a heck of a lot of, and a heck of a lot, I mean the entire series of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on audiobook, uh, when I came up with the idea for these guys. <laughs> and, uh, the narrator just seemed to fit, so, <laughs> so I went with that. But, it looks like we're done with, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with that. So that, that is my basic shading. Bam, bam, right there, boom. All, all, all the thing stuff and words and whatever. So now, uh, the magic happens. I come over here. And I grab my blender tool, which this does come stock with the program. And just make sure it's a decent size. You don't want to completely knock out your shadows. And then we'll just do 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 bam. Look at that. Easy. Whoop. 
now we have shading this is how I do it um, so anyway we're talking about my artificial intelligence they uh, were built to monitor the other realities and uh, let the one that they are in know when other realities become aware and just kind of generally monitor the universes um, my multiverse the Bitzer Publishing's multiverse that is what they monitor so um, they got bored of just sitting there and staring at everybody right so they started talking to each other and they created an intergalactic web show that is hosted on all the servers across the entire multiverse so everyone can watch you know as long as you're in aware realm if you're not in aware realm and you haven't gotten onto the intergalactic web then you're just out of luck uh, sorry earth just just not that advanced sorry Eotera, they are not aware yet either so one day one day sooner than earth that's for sure um so 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 what was i saying dang my train of thought i like to leave the station without me um so right they were bored and they started a web show and this is part of their web show this whole side story um and once in a while they tune in and they monitor ellie and that's why they pop up there because they monitor everything in the universe and the web show is about the most interesting things um and i have decided that on occasion eutera is most interesting <laughs> so they uh they're following a boy from ellie's class in this show called martin and he went to visit his friends in his last city he lived in because he moved to Linwood Theta last year or the summer of this year in in book <laughs> technically and uh, he missed his friends so they have a three-day weekend and he went to Truffle Springs to visit all of his friends and as the name wouldn't tell there's an active volcano and a lot of hot springs so they end up at a hot spring because hot sp every anime slash manga slash things in this style need a hot spring episode, right? I'm pretty sure that's a criteria. Just that's that's my finished shading. And now I'm gonna do what I call page completion or panel completion. So what I do is I turn off the shading and I select with the fancy wand tool, hit down shift to uh, select multiple, and then I expand it just a smidgen, and I turn it back on, copy, go under it, and paste. Now we've got this, whoops, second shade layer, and uh, what I do is I change the second shade layer that's underneath the original from multiply to color burn. So I get this color burn effect on just the skin, and I feel that really brings my characters to life. It gives them a really beautiful look, um, and it's just something I like to do personally. And I actually found this technique out on accident, uh, kind of right in the middle of chapter like six or seven. It just kind of happened. If you, if you read book two when it comes out, it, it's pretty obvious. All of a sudden, they have more depth. Um, <laughs> do that a couple times. I, I made some stock eye images so that I can change the colors and pay, post, paste them in easily so I didn't have to continue drawing eyes. I just made one that was really really good and you know started using that all over the place um, just to give my characters more depth and make it look more realistic and look more beautiful how I want it to look. And so this next step uh, is adding the blushies. Go for a nice pink and uh, hit up this FX airbrush, which I'm pretty sure I bought from Fendant Tools or something like that. Um, I would have to check. I've got a lot of stuff on here that I've bought from other people, which is awesome that there's a community out there for it. But basically, you just add a little more to their skin, you know, where 
where the bones would be meeting a little bit more, where the sun might be shining on it a little bit more, you know, stuff like that, give them more depth. And it's really subtle, but it really helps a ton. And uh, that's pretty much it for my shading. And then next I do highlights after that, so might as well show you since we're here. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, there's this uh, ray pen brush, ray pen number two. This There's a number three and all these other ones, but the ray pen number two. Um, pretty sure that's the kanji for ray or light or something. It's, uh, it's one of the tools you can get in the uh, Clip Studio assets that comes with the program. It's awesome and it's my favorite brush ever. And you have to go back to your color layer to make it work, but it is super cool. Trust me, watch, watch, watch. Bam. Uh, which doesn't seem like much, but this FX Glow is my original one, and that is still cool, but that's just putting white over my color. The, uh, this one right here actually highlights the color itself and changes the color, which I think is awesome, and it really adds that glow effect that I love. But um, sometimes I use them both together. I think I'll do that here, just because I want a little more drama, a little, a little more brightness. But then I just go and I glow. I glow it up, man. I love the glows. The glows are life. Not really, but the glows are still pretty nice. Um, I like the glowies. They're pretty. It's kind of like the blushies. They're just necessary. And, uh... Our, our light source is directly in front of her, remember? So we're going to have a lot more light. Oops, come on. There we go. Right there in the front. I've got some tasteful side boob right there. Um, get that right there, because it will probably be... Actually, we're going to need some back shadowing right there, too. Um, or shadowing? No, no, highlighting because drama and effect and light source all things to keep in mind and as for composition I certainly don't claim to be one of the best um, composition has been tough to learn and I've been teaching myself for six years um, I think we went over that <laughs> but uh, it's just something I'm still learning but that's okay um, I really don't know what to do with the back of this. I want to give it a little more texture, a little more something something. But I'm pretty happy with that. And this is just a side story, so I'm not going to stress over it. Because it has given me a lot of grief already, and a lot of stress that I didn't need. Um, so guys, do your projects, follow your dreams, but don't let it kill you. <laughs> Just don't let it. Enjoy life. It's 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 important, but it's not more important than your health. And you can always come back, you know, just take a break, come back later, make sure you give your eyes a rest from the computer, make sure you eat. That is something that I have had to teach myself to do, is to take breaks to eat, to take breaks to stand up, and I, I work out um, not a ton, but just enough, you know? You don't need to work out a bunch and become, you know, Ape Gorilla Man. You just need to do a couple push-ups and, you know, some jumping jacks to get your blood flowing. And it'll help burn off some calories and, you know, just make you feel better. Something I learned last month that I just never really put together. Um, did you know that what you eat directly affects your brain? It makes sense, but I just never quite... Put that together and uh, I was really depressed for a few months and you know I started eating better completely like I totally switched and I started eating really good um, I've gone back to a few of my favorite things like ice cream and you know it's it's fine to have stuff in moderation but um, the, the change has been drastic my mental health has been so much better but anyway this page is done I finished my last panel and I will, I will let you see, just, just because I like you guys, 
So this is the panel and in its entirety. Do a little close up. We've got her up here, like, oh no, guys, the, the people are coming. I hear I hear the adults coming. Stop looking at each other over the dang thing. They're these two are like peeping on each other and now they're mad at each other and it's great. And she's like, no, stab, stab. And then she's like, oh, gosh, I gotta do something to get their attention and make them stop yelling. Sigh. And then she's like, boobs. Look at that big old boobs. And then they shut up. They shut up real good. Good for her. <laughs> so. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial babble, because it can't seem to do anything without babbling a bunch. I hope you enjoyed my little shading tutorial, and stay strange, guys!